Hey everyone, this is Baylor. Welcome back to building a shopping cart with rails. This is going to be some part. I don't know which part. I don't care about the numbers. Look at the video title because I am more diligent there, but not when I'm recording because I don't really care when I'm recording. So in the last video, we looked at listing out our categories. We count how many categories we have total. We list out them with the number of products in each of these. And then what we want to do now is actually make these links so that we can click on a category and list all the products with its variants. So let's do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is hop over into our editor. We're going to go into Vim and we're going to go to our config slash routes.rb file. And what we're going to do here is paste in, I'm pasting in code now because I think it's easier for you to see if you don't have to watch me type it. So here what we've done is we're defining that we have a resources for categories. And inside of there, you can see this is a block and we have a nested resource for products. And the reason we're doing this is because we're defining that we have a top level categories and inside of each category, there is another set of, there's a set of products specific to that. Now what we wanna do in, to, to further this is we wanna come in here and we wanna make it so that when we define these resources, we're only defining the index action because right now that's all we need. Because we define our routes here in this, this Ruby file, if we go back to the command line and we run rake routes or roots, depending on where you're from, or I'm from, you probably say roots. You can see that it has, we have our root route or root or a root root. This is at the forward slash and it tells us it goes to the categories controller and the index action. And then you can see where we defined our categories resource has defined slash categories, and this goes to the same controller and action. But because we nested products, this actually is a slash categories with a category ID slash products. And what's also really cool here is when you run this command, it also tells you this prefix, this variable. And these variables actually they mean something because this is what you, inside of your Ruby view files, when you want to make a link, this is what you're going to use. You're going to look at category underscore products. And also notice how it created this, the, the singular plural inflection on these words, because we're looking at a single category. You can see it's categories with a category ID for many products. So it's really cool how Rails does all of this behind the scene, simply because we added a nested products resource is we want to hop into our view file for our categories index HTML file. And we want to change out these triple lines here. So what we're doing now, we're still looping over each of our categories, but now instead of just define or listing out the category title and its products, we're wrapping it in a link to block where we're passing in that category underscore products underscore path. This is important. That's why it says prefix, because the suffix is either path or URL, depending if you want a full URL or just the path. And what, what Rails is doing here is we're passing in category, just the object. And when Rails knows that when we pass in an object like this, that it's going to call .id on it. And so if we go back and we refresh our view file, you can see now it's listed out all of these categories that are now links. And if, if Macintosh would get it right, there we go. And if you look at the bottom left corner, you can see that it's, slash, it's category slash 45 slash products or 39 slash products or 36. So Rails is actually putting in the ID where the category ID is in the when we, when we previewed those routes. But if we click on this, you can see it fails because it says we don't have a products controller. So let's go and define our products controller real quick. And so now we're in our products controller. You can see it's defined at app slash controller slash products controller. And what we want to do is put in our default controller. And so we define this with class products controller, it inherits from application controller. And we define we have our index action because that's what rake routes told us. And then what we want to do inside of here is to find that we want to have our, we want to assign our category variable. And we said we find this category from our params category ID. Now this is really cool. And the reason we know we can access this because when we did our rake routes, you can see it defined category products, categories, and it said colon category ID. And that's where we get this from. And so when we run this, when we re whenever, when we hit this route, Rails has already assigned this 
based on whatever is in the URL. In this case, it's 39. So once we find this category, then what we do is we define that we want to have our products come from category products. And then we're going ahead and including our variants because we're going to want to look at those. And then we order this by their title. Now when we refresh, Rails is not going to be happy because we haven't given it a view file. So our view file needs to live at app views products then index.html.erb. And the view we're going to use is this one. And so I've gone ahead and just created this because there's a lot of typing here and it's not fun to watch it. What we're doing is we're creating kind of like a poor man's breadcrumbs where we say we have a link back to our categories. This goes to our root path. If we separate this with a forward slash and we have our category title because we have access to this because in our controller, you can see that we defined, we assigned category here as an instance variable that's indicated with a spiral. So that means it becomes available to us in our view. So we can say we want to print out the category title and then we list out our products. And so for this, what we're doing is we're saying go over each product. We assign the product variable for each item and as we enumerate over this, and then we print out the product title, where in parentheses we're printing out the product price. And then we create another nested unordered list. And this time we're going for our product variants. We're saying go over each of these and we're going to list out the variant title and the price as well. Very similar to what we did up here. And if we look back, you can see that we are going to make this efficient because we said we want to include our variants for each of these products as we're finding them. So if we refresh our page now, you can see we're saying we're getting categories. It's the baby category. And we have all of these cool products for our baby category. But the only thing, if we look at this, you notice the price, it, it's not formatted correctly. And Rails has got our backs covered here. So what we can do is if we go back to our view file, so what we're going to do is when we print out our product price, we want to also say we want to format this number to currency. And we'll do the same thing here for our variant price. And now when we refresh, you notice that Rails prefixes this with a dollar and it already did the decimals. But if we had a decimal, like right, our database only allows two decimal places. If we allowed like a hundred thousand of them, it would still only have two because Rails knows that when we format a cur to a currency, we don't need but only two decimal places. And you can customize this. You can say that I want to have a precision here of three and Rails just figures that out. So I did this down here. Uh, but in our case, we only really need just two. And so Rails does that by default. And so the last thing that I want to talk about here is remember I kind of mentioned we, we specified in our controller that we want to include our variants. And the reason we did that is because if we take a look at the our server logs. So when we start a get request to 39 slash products, you can see it defines our first SQL query where it finds the category by that ID. And that was from that first line where we said categories that find by params category ID. It loads the product where this category ID equals. That was where we said category dot products. And then when we said includes product or include variants, you can see it loads all the variants where their IDs are inside of that products, where these products match. And so this loaded all of these variants here based on these individual product IDs. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. If you have any questions that you want to see anything with Rails, I record these videos like the day before I upload them. So I'm, I'll be able to squeeze in whatever questions you've got. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.